Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. You know I'm a fan of pepper balls. I, I like the concept. I like the ability to deliver a chemical round in a projectile and deliver it to someone. I like the concept of breaking that on someone and it having a chemical effect. The chemicals work, I, uh, they absolutely work. It's all about dosage, it's all about getting the right cloud, and it's all about having a person that's receptive to receiving those chemicals and it having maximum effect on them. And then the question becomes, how do you do that most effectively? And for the purpose of this video, I'm not, we're not talking about a, a particular example where the pepper ball works or doesn't work, although I am gonna show you a video where it's a best case scenario and in that case, if the person's in an enclosed vehicle and there's a window cracked and you can get that ball in or you can break the ball even on the window, that is gonna drift in and it's gonna slowly affect them. And if the person doesn't have a weapon, if they're not firing back, uh, eventually they're gonna get out. Absolutely, they're not gonna tolerate it and it's gonna get to them. So with that said, let's walk through this video. Uh, officers taking out his uh, pepper ball patrol carbine here a very nice new launcher perfect for this situation he's going to use pepper balls he knows uh, exactly what the scenario is they've got a suspect who's basically barricaded in a car does not want to come out um, he's going to go over and and fire at the vehicle and so that's that's really the the, the backstory on what's going on here you ne you never know if the powder is going to get in. Uh, you, they have uh, the potential to break glass, but I think in this particular case, my understanding from reading was that there was a crack in the window and they took advantage of that. So these shots are put right on target. Just textbook example of a best case perfect scenario. And then he lets him brew, lets a little bit of time go by, a little bit of encouragement from the other officers, you know, saying exactly what needs to be done. And uh, eventually the person complies. This is a person who wasn't suicidal. This is a person who did not have other weapons and wanted to fight. And, and th in these particular cases, the person gives himself up. And that's exactly what you want. You save that person's life and the situation is resolved. Now, in this, this kind of example is where I really think that pepper balls shine. And it's a good example of police using them for exactly the right situation. I want to talk a little bit about the biology of the OC powder, PAVA powder that's used, uh, and there's also um, the tear gas, CS gas. It's a very different compound uh, structurally, and it binds a different receptor, but it again, it's activating the same pathways, the pain pathways, the heat pathways. These are things that your body naturally is evolved to be able to sense very very acutely because these are important for you to stay healthy and stay away from harm. These are like acute response uh, pathways that get activated by this chemical and that's why the chemical works so well. So the, the Berna balls, everybody knows uh, they have a pepper version and they have a, a CS pepper version. Um, I have the material safety data sheets for, for those and the Pava powder is at 4%, and that's um, a 1% pepper, 4% pava powder. And you can compare that to the uh, pepper ball brand, which has the 5% and the 2%. So again, you're looking in that 1% to 5% range of pava powder, and that is the sufficient amount in order to get an effect. Berna also has a a product which they call Berna Max, and this is a powder that is 1% OC, but has 8% CS. And CS, according to the literature that I've read, uh, because it binds to a different receptor, it's slightly different. Uh, it acts a little bit faster and it may actually be a little more potent, but, but PAVA is extremely potent. And so they both have significant effects on people to the point where if you get overexposed, if the person is in a room and you just filled it with, with gas and the person doesn't leave and they continue to breathe it, 
and they try to just take it, uh, there are systemic effects that, that can occur because you got to realize that these powders, once they're breathed into your lungs and capillaries in your lung tissue that will absorb those chemicals very quickly. That's why, that's why smokers want to get the, want to inhale the nicotine because it's the fastest way to deliver it into their body, get it into their lungs. Same thing with these powders. They're going to get in your body systemically. And the thing that we forget is that, you know, yes, they work on your skin, they burn your skin, they burn your eyes, they burn when they get in these mucous membranes. But once they get in your body systemically, they're having uh, effects on your body just like a drug. And we know from uh, literature that, that eating hot peppers is actually good for you. There are a lot of benefits. But if you, if you get too much, they, they can also then start to hit tissues that you really don't intend for them to hit. And, and going through the lungs is very different than if you're eating peppers and pepper powder through your GI tract and it's passing through. This is getting into your bloodstream. This is getting into your system in a very different way and it can affect your endothelial cells throughout your body and your vasculature. So I want to talk just a little bit about that. I'm going to try not to get into to deep science, so I'm trying to walk a fine line here, but I do want you to understand the, the, the general concept of, of why these things can also be quite dangerous in certain people. That tear gas and pepper spray have been around a long time and they're used worldwide and these agents uh, have been used uh, on people and there are epidemiological studies that show that these can cause lung and cutaneous and ocular injuries and they also can be co co provide uh, even more severe effects on people that have other comorbidities. So if you have uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, or you have um, systemic inflammatory disease, for example, or if you have something that is going to increase your, your baseline level of, of inflammatory activity in your body, I think you need to be very careful being exposed to these, and you certainly would not want to, to voluntarily be exposed to these. There are two receptors. There's TRPV1, and there's TRPA1, and it's really not necessary to know the difference, but these are, because they're expressed in those neurons, and they, um, they're they also expressed throughout the body in many other places. So it's, it's really important that you realize there are health risks associated with these pepper powders, and that um, there are case reports of examples of people that have been exposed, ended up having a um, cardiovascular event, they act on receptors, and these receptors uh, as I mentioned, they're, they're involved in heat sensing and pain sensing, and that's, that's just a perfect I ideal situation for a chemical weapon. Uh, they can cause skin burns and dermatitis, uh, as well as cardiovascular and gastrointestinal effects, and there have been severe injuries and deaths that have been reported. And so I think you have to, to, to realize that TRPV1 is the target of the capsaicin that's in the pepper spray, uh, it's the target for PAVA, and TRPV1 is just an ion channel that's expressed in what's called nocea receptors. These are pain-sensing sen peripheral sensory nerves, uh, and they, they reach throughout your body. What most people don't realize is that endothelial cells, which make up your vasculature, your arteries, and your veins, these, these, the cells that line these, these, um, these tunnels that basically run through your body, are uh, enriched in these receptors. And so once you get this into your system through your lungs and systemically, you can then start to hit your, your cardiovascular system and you can hit other tissues. And that's not necessarily gonna cause you pain. You're not gonna feel pain throughout your body from all of this, but it can lead to things like cough, uh, inflammation in the airways and airway obstruction. If you have asthma, it can ex exacerbate the effects of the asthma and it can lead to really difficult difficulty breathing. And that's part of the phenotype of what you see when you treat with this, um, these chemical agents. Um, itching and dermatitis, these are relatively minor and, and you never know what kind of adverse effects can, can occur. So TRPV1 is a membrane bound receptor and it's involved in both sensitization and desensitization. That's why when you get exposed to OC at, at relatively low concentrations, you're going to be quite sensitive to it. But with increased exposure, you're, you actually have a reverse effect where, where there's desensitization that occurs. And that's one of the reasons why when you eat hot peppers and really spicy food, you, you know, it can be uncomfortable initially, 
but I don't know if you've ever noticed that you have, have chronic pain or other type of pain and you eat that. After you get past that initial wave of being uncomfortable, there's a desensitization effect and, and pain seems to be going away. It actually has a pain relieving effect, which is really, really kind of counterintuitive when you think about it, but that's really how these, how these work. So TRPV1 works in the nervous system, and that's, that's the primary place, but you gotta realize that once it gets into your system, the endothelium, epithelium, all your immune cells, including your T-cell activation and macrophages, a lot of these get activated by this compound. And this can be really a problem in people who already have hyperactivated immune system, inflammatory disease, and so it, it, it can be a bad thing. So TRPV1, especially if it affects your arterial smooth muscle cells, which affect your uh, constriction of your blood vessels, you can actually get you know, a tightening of your blood vessels and leading to potential for increase for stroke. And so that's definitely a chronic concern for anyone that gets exposed. You wanna get them out of there. You wanna be able to breathe better, um, deep breaths and get, getting in more, more oxygen, but you also really have to realize that there can be vasoconstriction and that's gonna to lead to less oxygen being transported from your red cells throughout the body your red blood cells full of heme, which binds oxygen molecules and carries them throughout the body. And so you just have to realize that there are systemic effects that can occur. And some of these in the wrong person at the wrong time can be life-threatening. And so anyone that gets exposed to these needs to be treated. And that's why in California, I know that they have you go through training. You have to, you're, you're required to treat the person after you use the chemical on them. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. This person tried to attack you. You use your chemical rounds and now you have to treat them. But there is some, some valid medical, you know, reason for why, why these things are suggested. And, you know, one of the reasons why is that there is a case report of a 21 year old man was pepper sprayed and he subsequently developed ventricular fibrillation. It was a, basically, they believe it was a, a capsaicin-mediated coronary, coronary spasm. And, um, you know, in that case, it can be a disaster because you hear you, you're just trying to defend yourself. You're trying to go non-lethal. And so just realize that that is always an issue, especially if you, you just barrage someone with pepper balls. And maybe you don't even hit them directly, but they're, they're cornered and they can't get out, uh, and you're, maybe you're trying to contain them, or, you know, that's when it crosses the line between be, being defensive and offensive, and you need to always err on the side of being defensive. These receptors are, are really interesting in that they, they're great targets for these chemical compounds. You know, around the world, there, there are severe restrictions on using chemicals in warfare. There's, there's restrictions in many countries. You just can't use these. In the United States, we do have the ability to use these at this time, and, and I think that if you are gonna use them, use them wisely, because it doesn't take many bad examples for uh, something to go wrong and suddenly the laws start to change. In summary, it's basically a, a really nice concept. It does have practical application. I think mostly in the case of crowd control, outside where people are free to roam and move away from the cloud. Uh, I think it, it, it brings much more risks in, indoors if you try to use this in, in an indoor situation, especially if you're delivering dozens of pepper balls, not just one or two. And the dosage really matters. If you get too much dosage and the person breathes in too much dosage, uh, there are a lot of systemic issues that can arise and, and you, you know how our legal system is, there, there can also be lawsuits and a lot of things can follow. So uh, you're better off to rely on that kinetic hit and that, that little cloud and hope that it gets in their eyes. Uh, because these are receptors and this is a biochemical pathway that's, that has to get activated, there are some folks who are naturally more resistant to these and these receptors can be blocked by uh, any, any medications which a blunt pain, o opioids, and other drugs that would block your pain uh, signals. A lot of this is just intracellular signaling of, of molecules that uh, you, you don't really need to know all the, the, the details, but to, to know that it gets from the cell surface, it gets into the cell and it stimulates gene expression and, and it stimulates a, a response. And, and any, any step along the way that you blunt that with a drug 
or the person is mentally unfit, may, maybe you're going to get suboptimal results from your pepper balls. So just keep in mind that, um, you know, your normal healthy person who has a good response to these is going to hate it. And these are the people that you see on the test demos who just can't take it and they, they have to rinse their, their, their face and rinse their eyes. But a person who is disturbed and a person who is on drugs um, is not going to respond to this most of the time. I, I, I believe that even um, people that are, per, are not on drugs but are trained and have gone through this, you can learn how to deal with it and you can fight through it. They, it this is taught to... Um, you know, law enforcement and military, they, they learn how to deal with this. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I think we can talk about this more. Everybody take care and we'll see you in the next one.